Kelly was excited to finally get a night out. It had been a long week and she had made plans with one of her best friends for Friday night to do one of their favorite things, ghost hunting. About once a month, they would jump in the car and head out to every supposedly haunted place they could find. Donning flashlights, they would creep through cemeteries, old houses, and other abandoned places in search of anything out of the ordinary. They had never really found anything other than some shadows and spooky feelings, but the thrill of the hunt never grew old. Pulling up to the house at around 7, Kelly blasted the horn and yelled out the open window. Linda came strolling out the door a couple of minutes later and they were off. The first supposedly haunted location was about 30 minutes away and they got there a little after 8 thanks to a tractor hauling some hay that slowed them down. All right, so what's the story behind this one? Linda asked, pulling her shades off as they climbed out of the car. So, this one is the site of Sarah's grave. Sarah was apparently a witch in the 1800s who was married to a blacksmith. From what I read, she was cheating on him with some local guy, and when he found out, he killed both her and her lover in a fit of rage, Kelly said, trying to make the story sound as mysterious as possible. And they buried her on the side of the road? Linda was looking around in the brush for a grave marker as she spoke. Well, not exactly. See, her husband buried her body somewhere along the road, after he removed her head and buried it somewhere else. Apparently, witches can't be fully killed, and the only way to stop them from coming back is to decapitate them. The legend says her spirit wanders the road at night, searching for her head. So we just wait around here until it's dark and hope she shows up? Linda laughed as she imagined a headless body dressed like a pilgrim wandering down the road in the dark. And more like we wait a little bit and then drive up and down the road a couple of times hoping to see her, Kelly said. The two hung out at the small pull-off until it was dark enough to need the headlights and then climbed back in the car. It sounded for a minute like the engine might be having some trouble, but it finally sputtered to life and they were on the road. After a couple of passes along the short stretch, they decided the witch was probably taking a night off and started making their way to the next stop. By now, it was completely dark and the only light was coming from their headlights. More than once, they thought they saw odd things along the road, only to go back and find oddly shaped rocks or trees. Finally arriving at the second stop, they parked on a bridge that crossed a raging river below. Another crybaby bridge? Linda asked. Nope. This one is a headless motorcyclist, Kelly smiled. Oh, you know I like bad boys on motorcycles. Tell me he was tall, dark, and handsome, Linda said, grinning back at her friend. I'm not sure how tall he was, but I'm sure he was handsome. This one goes back to World War I or shortly after. A young man had been dating a girl who lived just up the road here before being shipped off to fight in Europe. She promised she would wait on him to return, but he was gone for nearly two years before finally making it home. When he got back, he bought a motorcycle with the money he had been saving while deployed and made his way to his lover's house. Arriving at her door late in the evening, he was greeted by a man he didn't know before the woman came to the door and explained that she had married someone while he had been away. Broken hearted and blinded by tears, he jumped back on his motorcycle and tore off down the road. As he approached this bridge, he started to lose control of the bike and wound up going over the edge into the river below. The next morning, the police found his motorcycle and body, but his head was missing and they couldn't locate it anywhere. They assumed it had been washed down river somewhere, and that was that. The legend is that if you park on this bridge on the anniversary of his death, flash your headlights and honk your horn three times, the headlight from his motorcycle will appear at the house where the girl once lived and make its way down the road before disappearing as it hits the bridge. Kelly had a big smile on her face as she finished the story. Please tell me tonight is the anniversary, Linda said. Kelly nodded. As both women looked out the windshield, 
Kelly started flashing the headlights and honking the horn. As the horn sounded for the third time, they sat in silence and waited to see what would happen. After several minutes passed with no action, they finally decided to give up and move on to the final spot. Following a gravel road for several miles, Kelly pulled the car into a short driveway that led up to a cemetery. Fog was beginning to form, rolling between the stones as they climbed out of the car. This one looks super spooky, Linda said. I saved the best for last, Kelly smiled. The story goes that an old farmer and his family died in a fire in their farmhouse that sat at what is now the back of the cemetery sometime in the 1930s. They were all buried here, followed by several other people over the years, as this became the official town cemetery. The legend is that the farmer can sometimes be seen tending the grounds here late at night or riding with his family up and down the road we were just on. No one knows why they're still here, but supposedly, if you see them, it's a bad omen and you can expect to die a fiery death. I call BS based on the way this night's been going, Linda laughed as she walked among the stones. Looking at the stones, there were several families buried together, but none that seemed to have all died on the same day. After about an hour of exploring and waiting on something to happen, they decided to call it a night and head home. Climbing back in the car, Kelly turned the key, only to have the engine refuse to start. After several attempts, she climbed out to look under the hood. This is the worst time to break down, Linda's voice quivered. It's never acted like this, Kelly responded. Even with the flashlight, she was having trouble seeing what was wrong. She wasn't a mechanic, but she had worked on the car before and had a good idea of what to check when it had problems. As she was checking one of the belts that had come loose in the past, the sound of distant hooves caught her attention. She looked over at Linda to find her friend's wide eyes looking back. Uh, it's almost two o'clock. Is it normal for horse and buggies to be out this late? Linda asked. I don't know, maybe. Kelly said as she walked around to the back of the car and looked up the road toward the sound. As Linda joined her, the women were astonished to see what appeared to be the light from a lantern moving toward them on the gravel road. As it drew closer, they could make out four shadowy shapes riding in an old-fashioned wagon. The driver brought the wagon to a stop and called out. Are you ladies in need of assistance? A male voice asked. Our car broke down, Kelly replied, unsure of what else to say. I'd be happy to take a look at it if you'd like, he said, raising the lantern up to reveal his face, as well as the woman and children that were riding with him. We would be extremely grateful for any help you can give. We just want to get home, said Kelly, a little more relaxed seeing the family. The man climbed down and made his way over to the front of the car. You know, two young ladies like yourself shouldn't be out here all alone this late at night. This is a dangerous area, the man said as he investigated the engine. We can handle ourselves, Linda said defensively. What she means to say is we know all about the ghost story. We've been to plenty of places like this and we've never had any trouble, Kelly interjected, shooting a glance at Linda. The ghost story is the least of your concerns out here, the old man chuckled. It's exaggerated anyway. There's no fiery death or anything like that. I'm talking about the girl that was killed out here a few years ago. She came out looking for the ghost just like you two. They found her body in the back of the cemetery. The person that killed her was never caught. We didn't know about that. When did it happen? Kelly asked, a slight tremble in her voice. Oh, about 10 years ago or so. Like I said, they never caught the guy. Kelly and Linda locked eyes, both unsure of what to do. Kelly had done some research about the place but had never heard of a girl being killed. Something about this guy seemed off. I think I found the problem. Go ahead and give it a try now, the man said, raising his cold eyes to look at Kelly. Climbing in the driver's seat, she slipped the key in the ignition and turned. The car roared to life, bringing waves of relief to both women. Y'all should be good to go now, 
Just get out on the road and be careful on your way home, the man said with a smile. He dropped the hood and started walking back to the wagon. Linda climbed in the car, putting her seatbelt on to signal she was ready to get out of there. That guy was a little creepy, but at least he got it running, she said, looking over at Kelly. Kelly watched the man in the rearview mirror as he climbed back into the wagon. Oh, I forgot to tell him thank you, she said, climbing out of the car and turning around to wave and yell thanks, only to find that the wagon she had seen only seconds before was no longer there. <laughs>